What's going on guys? So today on this Friday we got a 2006 Toyota Highlander V6. It's a 3.3 liter engine and we are going to replace the valve cover gaskets because they are leaking pretty profusely and also we're going to replace the high pressure power steering pump. Uh, that one I believe also has some issue. So, I'm not going to film it, I'm pressed for time, uh, but the gist of the job, I've explained in other videos with a similar engine, uh, not too much different from most applications, uh, basically uh, remove the engine cover, remove the battery negative terminal, remove the air cleaner. Uh, remove the throttle body, remove all of the connection going towards the intake, the front ones and the back one, remove the strut brace right there across, uh, remove the uh, intake manifold, and then you have access to the back. And uh, yeah, so I'll just get back to you uh, if anything that I come across. That needs so this is the progress so far. I've been here for 20 minutes. Um, Strap brace is off, air cleaner, the top is off. Um, the bolt, the security bracket onto this side is off. You don't have to remove the um, throttle body if you don't have to, but there's a bolt right there hiding behind the throttle body. You can see it really. So that one is off. Now I'm attacking the other bracket, which is gonna be this one right here. And that one, I'm just using a stubby. I got a 14 millimeter stubby. So usually it's not put on very tight, so, which is a good thing. So I don't know if you can see it. Right, let me get out of your way. It's like that. As you can see, my hand is there. I'm on it right now, so. It's already broke loose. I can probably run it by hand now. So that's what you need to do with that one. And after that, we're gonna remove this manifold here with all of the uh, vacuum uh, switches and hoses. Just remove it. I usually just kind of like lay it to the side. I don't mess with it too much because it's brittle right now. I don't want to go ahead and replace it. All right, guys. So intake is ready to come off. I've run into a little bit of a snag there because of the power steering pressure hose, which I'm replacing, by the way. As you can see in the middle of the screen there, it's definitely leaky. But anyway, because of that um, and the bracketry around the power string and the way it's running, I don't know if I can and give you a clear shot right there. Let me see if I can zoom in. All right, so the power steering holes right there, you see, if you follow it, you're gonna get to a bracket, another bracket. There's always, they want it right here by the uh, throttle body, as you can see, right there. But further down, um, if you follow it down, right there, if it'll pick it up, there's another bracket. You have to remove that. And the way I did it was using uh, my long ratcheting wrenches because it's a pretty tight fit there. So, uh, I mean, you know, you can use whatever works for you, but uh, these things, it always work for me. If you have any uh, questions, because it may not be clear what I'm trying to explain right now, but I'm sure if you're doing it, it'll all make sense to you. How? So now, this is supposed to come out, hopefully. Well, there's a, one more line. It's probably going to be the PCV hose line. Um, usually it's all bad, and that's the one right there. Um, you got to decide which way you want to take it from. Do you want to take it from the engine side? Do you want to take it from the manifold side? I prefer the manifold side because it's less heat on a tight. So hopefully it's not going to crack and fall apart as soon as I go and try to remove it. Uh, I need two hands because you really got to finesse it. I don't have a replacement for it. But that's the last thing that I need to take out. And uh, this intake will be out of here. Now we got to deal with this leak, which probably I'm going to do tomorrow. I just wanted to come and do some work today to get most of it. Well, not most of it, but at least, you know, some of these things out of my way. And then the bulk of the job is going to be tomorrow, which is removing the valve covers. Or maybe tonight, you never So, intake is off. Now I can show you what I was talking about in the power steering hose. Um, 
So this is the first, oh, I'm not even in the shot, sorry guys. This is the first bracket that's the closest one to you. Uh, this is for the intake manifold. So you, this one is easy to get to. This one is the most difficult one to me, for me today. This one would have been difficult if it was tight and it wasn't that tight, thankfully. So I was able to uh, get to it as I showed you in the video. So this one, in order for me to be able to fit my wrench, I had to go and release this one right here, 10 millimeter nut. So now I got flex. Now I'm gonna remove this one too, because as I said before, this line is getting replaced. I got a brand new line that's going there. So, I mean, if you're gonna do this line, I think you have to remove the intake. I don't think you can get anything past this one. It'll be extremely difficult and uh, very time consuming to do otherwise. So, and also for the PCV, as I said, I, I chose the intake side. I think it's less damage because it's less heat going towards that uh, intake. Um, now, comes another challenge. We know all about this Toyota um, ignition coil wires, tabs on the connector, they break. So I just feel bad when I do this myself, honestly. I really do feel bad. And also, I forgot to ask the customer to do a tune-up. Matter of fact, this is a good situation that I'm not going forward with the job all the way. I'm going to call him and ask him if he wants to do a tune-up, and we're going to add some more money to that. I just, at least for the spark plugs, no extra, uh, sorry, my hand is shaking. No extra uh, labor would be required by myself. It's okay. This is a good cost of mine. So, yeah. Now, you can see how the valve cover on the side is sunk in. And this is the difficulty to try to get to the bolts on the other side of it exactly because of the angle. Um, I mean, Toyota, I don't know what they were thinking about when they did it like that. Because if I look at the front of the engine here, uh, yes, I mean, I have uh, the most room. But I feel like the engine could have been a little bit more forward to give you, uh, you know, a little bit more room in the back there. But anyway, uh, it's just me talking, venting. Um, let me go ahead and uh, unplug the O2 sensors, release that uh, power steering hose line, um, and uh, yeah, and see where we go from there. All right, guys, so this is the last one for the night because I'm tired now. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to release the wiring harness all the way around on this side, and the reason being you get so much more slack once you get to that point that it's definitely worth the try. I know it's not easy. Uh, there's a camshaft center uh, with the wiring that you have to unhook. That one is kind of a pain to get to. I use my, you know, the uh, hose plug, I mean hose uh, removing tools right there, right? So, right there. So that's what I use, gain access to it. It's hiding behind this big old uh, winding harness, you can't really see it. You have to really kind of move it around to see it, but now it's out of my way, so let me show you the connector. This is it. I broke the tab because I was using that plier, uh, but it's worth it in my opinion. Um, it'll go back in. I mean, the uh, weather, the weather packing right there will keep it intact, and if you want to go ahead and replace it while you're here, that's another choice, but now look at this wiring harness. All loose. Look at the room between the, the gasket, I mean the gasket, the valve cover and the wiring harness. Now this will come off with no issue at all. So tomorrow what I will do is go down because I want to replace the power sink hose. Not only that, I want to replace, I want to uh, loosen these bolts at the bottom too, to be able to have some type of movement left and right. It's going to help me when it's time to go back together and also to just take the valve cover out. Uh, I'm going to take it down just a few threads, allow some play, then I'm going to move it to the side. Same thing with the bigger bracket right there. And I'm also make sure I take off those bolts while I'm at the bottom because they're very accessible from the bottom. I did take the auto sensor wiring, like I said, off because it helps with uh, slack. And now I got my bungee cord set up for tomorrow, as you see right here right there and it's going to be uh hooked on top of the uh, around the uh, wiper blade there so this is enough for today or tonight uh so far i've been here for about an hour and maybe 20 minutes um and uh, yeah i'm almost now ready to take off that valve cover so not not a bad job so hour and 20 minutes you get to this point 
uh, hopefully uh, with the cleaning up and putting the new stuff on that's another hour the valve cover back is back together and then the last hour is just to do the front uh, and then a half an hour to put everything in back together uh, so I think it calls for three and a half hours for this job um, but um, yeah so three and a half hours it called or 3.2 uh, the uh, the power steering hose job calls for a, a 1.7 hours I, I believe so all together you know you talking about six hour job uh, not the worst but definitely not the easiest uh, if you're not somebody who has a lot of tools and familiar with tools and used to working on cars if you're gonna do this as a project for the first time I would say no you know that's just uh, my sincere advice there uh, you know if you use front bank you know you can give it a shot the rear bank right there and leave it to the pros you save yourself some headache just give it to us we'll handle that for you as you saw I will show it I chose to re re uh, leave the uh, uh, the ignition coils still attached and connected to the wiring harnesses and the reason being like I said I don't want to break the clips off if I don't have to I did spray the clips off with some uh, penetrant some uh, silicone uh, penetrant and I'm going to leave them overnight in case I have to touch them so far I'm trying not to but if I have to then at least um, you know I give it the best chance if it breaks then it breaks it's not my fault it's not your fault it's Toyota's fault What's up, YouTube? Welcome from the bottom of the car. This is the next day. As you see, this is the catalytic converter, the rear one. And uh, that's the engine. And that's the front of the car right there with the jacks. So I just remove, I will loosen that nut. I mean, the bolt right here. I'm trying to get you some zoom. That's the bracket you can see from the top right there. So now it's loose. So that's one. There's another one that I can't really show you right now because the heat shield is right in the way of that. But about where my finger is, well, now I can't get you a good shot there. I'm not sure if you can see. But anyway, that's the one to the side of it. I'm gonna try to um, bend the heat shield, which I just did, actually. Um, yeah, that's going to be a difficult shot to get there. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Um, but anyway, um, it's going to be, let me see. Nah, that's going to be difficult to see. But just take my word for it. It's right to the driver's side of the uh, cat converter right here in front of yours. So to the right where my hand is, if you just look up, there's another nut there, another bolt. It's a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna loosen that one too. And also while I'm here, if I may show you, now you see the valve cover bolts right there. Right, there's a valve cover bolt. And they could be tricky to get to from the top. So while you're here, uh, you might as well go ahead and uh, attempt to take those off. Uh, the one that's going to be challenging, especially the one on the corner right there, the very far corner. Uh, that might be a, a challenge. Maybe not for you, you know? But if you're really uh, good with your hands, maybe not. All right, guys, let me go ahead and uh, this is tight spot, and I hate to be underneath cars. So, so going towards the power steering line right now, um, I just undid the um, feed from the pump, I mean from the reservoir to the pump so I can gain a, access to the high pressure line that so that was in the way and I see now the green fluid as you can see it dripping down there that's what I was so seeing on the other side there thinking it was coolant but it's really not there's some green fluid I don't know usually Toyota take transmission fluid from Toyota in the power steam reservoir so I'm not sure why this green fluid but anyway so now the high pressure line is right above it. Oh, man. <laughs> this shot's going to be extremely hard to give with the camera. That's not cool. But anyway, 
This is right next to it. I mean, I can see it. I'm not sure why I can't show it, but without making you do all kinds of gymnastics. But right there next to it, yeah, that's the 24 millimeter that I have to now remove, which now I have good access. I'm going to use a big uh, 24 millimeter wrench and trying to take it out of there. Let me All right, so that high pressure uh, line is off now. That's what you see right there. Right there, dangling in the middle of the screen, right there, and that's the uh, non Joe fitting that comes with the um, pressure sensor right there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up really nice. Uh, yeah, not sure about this green fluid, I'm, I'm not, I've never seen that on a Toyota. Like I said, I'm used to the transmission fluid. So, now, anyway, now we can go back up top. With the car jacked up, it's gonna make it twice as hard now to reach all the way back here. But anyway, now our line should be loose up to a point. I'm not trying to, what is that? Yeah, I'm gonna be stuck on my little rig there, which I rigged up this. Uh, That's it. Now I'm gonna go on that side there. There's another, uh, looks like a 12 meter miller bracket that attaching the line to the uh, to the steering rack. I'm gonna go there with a long extension. Take that 12 millimeter. I will show it to you once I take it out. If I can get a good shot for you, I will get that shot for you. So the bracket I'm talking about in question right there. Let me see where we at. Um, Right on. You zoom right there at the bracket. That's what you see right there. At the steering column, at the steering rack. That one right there is a 12 millimeter. You gotta take that off, and the line is all the way loose, and you gotta remove it from the rack and pinion itself. I'm not sure what size is that. I'm gonna check, but well, sometimes it could be different, but you can check with the old one. But you know, usually around I don't know. I can't. I don't remember. I haven't done a. I haven't done a pressure line in like a, maybe a year. I removed the line from the bottom. Uh, not too bad. So now I'm going to remove uh, that bracket. I don't know where it's at right there. You see, this is my setup. Long extension going all the way down, which you can only see from this side. Um, let's see if I can give you a shot of it. Oh, damn it, where is it? This is in my way. That's it, my focus right there. Alright, so try to do this holding the camera and the light and trying to go with the impact. There you go. It's almost like a sniper. She took a shot. Look at that. Gunpowder. <laughs> All right. Okie doke. Are we coming now? Right, of course, the pesky line has to be hooked on it. All right, we're right. There you go. Boy, that's the easiest job I can imagine. I mean, I've done it before without removing the intake, but whew. Yeah, if 
But it's just hard with the intake off. Imagine without the intake off. Anyhow, moving on. Now I'm going to attack the valve cover. I'm trying to remove it out of there. All right, you see my rig, because I jacked it up, I'm using a tire to kind of give myself a little bit of reach. Because the car is high right now. I'm not going to put it down until I'm finished up. This with the uh, power steering situation there. So, step on a little ladder. Bolts are off all around. I just wanted to show you something. And I was talking about it before, uh, yesterday, about taking off that side of the um, wiring harness. It's bolted to the side and there's a, um, a crankshaft sensor, a camshaft sensor, right, on bank one. If you remove that wiring harness and the pigtail connector on the camshaft, look at what kind of space I can get. Look, I can literally lift up this whole thing. Look at this now. I don't know if you can really appreciate what's going on right now. <laughs> you can literally put a little baby inside here. That's how much room you got. So for all you out there having this problem, struggling with this and trying to fight with the gasket, I mean the gasket, the cover, trying to take it out, take your time. If you, I mean, that one is a little bit of a pain, again, as I said, to get to one side, but you can get it from the bottom. Like the connector, when you go down the bottom, it's really accessible if you got yourself uh, horse pliers or any other situation, or if you got really good, strong fingers, go ahead and uh, remove it from there. Uh, and there's a 10 millimeter nut securing the harness on the side. Remove the nut, and then you have it. Huge amount of space. And again, I don't have to remove even my coil packs. Left them the way it was. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, pry this thing open. Look at that, huh? I bet you probably could one-hand it at this point. Let me just move this thing out of my way. That's how much room is here. All right, let me show you now. So, you know, I ain't trying to stop. Right, let me just pry it up from all sides. How about I got all the bolts? I think I do. Yeah, I do. All right, let me just... I want to get this on camera just because. So you know what I'm saying, it's not a lie. Still getting hung up uh, because of the grooves on the side, but uh, oh, damn it, damn it! I mean, all right. Let me use two hands. <laughs> all right. Actually, no need. It was just this bracket right here. That bracket was blocking it. I just moved it to the side. Again, the importance of removing or undoing the bolts from the bottom of the bracket to give them that type of play. Look at this. One hand, literally, honestly, one hand. So, going back, you don't have to worry about the gasket rolling on you or anything like that. This gasket this is kind of pliable. I'm not sure why it failed. Look at it. It does come out. I mean, it's hard, but not that hard. Either way, um, let's look at the cam lobes. Not uh, uh, too bad. A little bit of um, issues right there to the right because that oil change was not done properly there. You can tell there's a little bit of build up there. But other than that, I'm not crying about it. Let me go ahead now. I'm pressed for time. Time is money. Um, you know, this is the hardest part of the job anyway, so everything else you can do yourself. So I'll maybe show you a shot when everything is put back together, but right now I got a sprint. And there's, I got... That was a good way of keeping track of your bolts and nuts. So, this is for the plenum. Of course, you got the uh, Allen 8 and the 14 millimeter. So I just thread each of them on the one side of the uh, nut. To keep them all together so now you know what I'm saying ingenious right all right so no leaks that's the rocket thing inside no leaks Let's check the pump side. Let 
a little bit more challenging to see, but right there. Okay, so that's all I wanted to see. Now I can bring the car down and focus on the front. This is the easy part, usually.